Hey guys, Tori here from Overlook Horizon. Welcome back. Welcome back to another launch day. Today we are launching the CRS-21 mission for SpaceX. In case you're watching the replay or just in case you just don't know where we are right now, it is December 6th, 2020. It's about, what is it, 1047 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you're watching the replay, I will put timestamps in the description below in case you want to skip ahead to different parts. But if you're here with me live, we're getting ready for SpaceX's CRS launch. Now, this is an exciting launch today. You can see NASA has gone live already, and we'll kind of switch back and forth between all these views. I do have to get my countdown clock updated. They just started that right before I went live here. But uh, I'll get the countdown clock updated in just a second. But this is an exciting, exciting mission. And super important, I think, for SpaceX. Because it's a CRS-21 mission, this is launching the Dragon V2, the Cargo Dragon V2, which is what they're showing here on the NASA stream. So this is the same platform as the Crew Dragon capsule. First time they're sending a cargo-only mission to the International Space Station with this capsule. So obviously they've flown with Crew, and you can see it right there on the pad. Looks very similar to the Crew capsule. You'll notice we don't see any of the Super Draco abort engines. There's no astronauts on board. But where this is super important, and where this is also a huge competitive advantage for SpaceX over some of the other launch providers, is that they're basically they're launching the same platform with cargo. So now... After this launch today, they will have launched Dragon V2 and docked to the International Space Station four times. Four times now to the International Space Station. Demo 1, Demo 2, Crew 1, and now CRS-21. Four times they will have docked to the International Space Station with this platform. Compare that to, like, Boeing. Sorry, Boeing. The Starliner. Zero. Zero times. So... This is a big benefit. Now, obviously, it doesn't have, like, the cockpit controls and life support systems and all that kind of stuff, but it does have same thrusters, same computer systems, uh, uh, same solar panels. These are not quite as long duration as the one that ones that are on Crew-1, but, uh, you know, same solar panel system, at least. So they're testing all the systems here that would be on a regular crewed mission. And they get to they get to gather more data. They're coming back, you know, when they re-enter, they'll retest the heat shield and re-entry procedures and thrusters for re-entry and all that kind of stuff. So they get so much extra data that a company like Starliner, even if things were going even if things were going great for Starliner, which I'm sure we probably all agree that they're not going great. Hopefully better, but not great, but even if things were going great for Starliner, they still wouldn't get all this extra data that SpaceX is able to get launching CRS missions in addition to the Crew Dragon missions, the crewed missions. So, so there we are. They're putting up the weather here on the screen. You can see that we're up to 70% go, 30% chance of violation. Big concern here is the thick cloud layer rule. Can't launch through thick cumulus clouds and... We ought to take this opportunity to take a look at the weather since we're talking about it here. So we'll pull up our weather map here. Let me get it refreshed real quick just to make sure we got the latest, the latest data. You can see this is our wind speeds right now. Wind speeds looking okay. Nothing too concerning. Three miles per hour. We're all right there. We'll go up to our upper level winds. That's always a bit of a concern. Upper level winds are high and it looks very high, but I'm actually not that concerned here. 99 miles per hour. So I may have to convert that to metric for me, but 99 miles per hour, high speed winds, but Falcon 9 should be okay in these upper level winds here. That's usually not, not a, not in the violation rule. Once you get a little bit higher than that, maybe like 115, 120, 150, that, get, that gets pretty high. Also direction of wind is a big concern as well when you're, when you're talking about wind shear. So the direction of this, the speed of this, I'm not too too concerned with the upper level winds the height of the upper level winds is about 12 kilometers it's usually right around 30 to 40 thousand feet somewhere in that range that's when we're saying upper level winds that's usually the winds that we're talking about usually 30 to 40 or 45 thousand feet in altitude it's about 12 kilometers in altitude so and this is also uh 
yeah, this is a 10 a.m. forecast for upper level winds. Uh, so this, you know, this could change a little bit to when it comes to launch time. So, so that's our winds. But obviously the, the big concern really is going to be, well, here's radar. We got no precipitation in the area. Uh, satellite is what I meant to pick here. It's the, the thick cumulus clouds. Now, we don't have a ton of clouds in the area. I think we might be okay. But the real concern is like you got to get these clouds out of the area if they're thick. It, it, we can't really tell on the map like how thick they actually are. But you got to get these out of the air we need we need, just need a hole to go through it doesn't have to be huge just need a hole to get up and over the clouds so that we can continue on so that's uh we're hoping that that's going to be okay and it's not it looks like i mean the radar there's plenty of space here question is will that space coincide with the launch site and the launch time because this is an instantaneous launch window. We're trying to meet up with the International Space Station. It's a traveling object. You can't you can't delay, because if you delay, your space station is not in the right place anymore. So you gotta catch up to it. And instantaneous launch window today at 11.17 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I don't know the exact seconds, but we'll uh we'll get to that and update our our countdown timer here. We, I probably should do that here pretty soon. That's not what we want. Let me let me update the countdown timer real quick so that we can at least get get that matched up while we're talking. Let's see how far off are we? We're like oh, I'm pretty close. And uh, I just didn't save it. Like one second off. So something like that. Oh, uh oh, what did I do? Let's try, let's try this. Is this better? 23, 37, 30, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty close. Fractions of a second off, but that's, a, that's about as close as I'm going to get it. So we'll, uh, we'll go with that and we'll see if that'll, that's pretty close. Okay. So continuing on before we switch over to, uh, what NASA and what SpaceX have to say today, I'm hoping... I have the SpaceX stream up. They haven't obviously gone live on the space. Do I have the SpaceX stream up? I thought I had the SpaceX stream up. <laughs> Maybe I don't have it up. Oh, there it is. I was kind of hoping because uh, I didn't set up the, I did not set up our telemetry gauges for this stream here today because I was uh, really hoping that that uh, SpaceX would have those today and was. Kind of hoping that NASA would not be taking the lead on the broadcast today, but we could be wrong on that. We'll see. We'll see as it gets a little bit closer. We'll switch over. We'll listen in in a little while. We'll see what they have to say, but let's continue on with what's happening here today. So launch trajectory here. We'll show you the 2D map here. This is the direction that we're heading out to the Northeast to meet up with the space station. It's pretty much what they do every time they meet up with the space station, whether it's crewed launches or cargo launches heading up there. Something that's a little bit different today. So we're, we're still launching from pad 39A. That's where all the dragons will launch from now because they use that crew access arm, the walkway there to get crew in the capsule, but they also use it for late loading cargo as well. So they they use that crew access arm for this cargo dragon as well. But so it'll always launch from 39A for dragon going forward, going to the northeast. And previously, we would do an RTLS, return to launch site landing for the booster. Not doing that anymore. This boost or this dragon is just a little bit heavier the previous Dragon was like right at the limits of RTLS landings. This one is just a little bit heavier and they cannot do RTLS landings for this Dragon when flying this Dragon. So we're landing on a drone ship out at sea. We'll head out, head out there and land. Then we've also got our second stage re-entry area off the coast of Australia out here. That's where the second stage will break up, burn up in the atmosphere into a billion pieces. And if you want a 3D look of it, we'll take a look at that from our, our friends at flightclub.io. have a pretty awesome service that I'm getting a little bit better at, at managing and learning how to, maybe I say that now, I shouldn't have said anything. 
Here we go. Here's our 3D look at the flight path here. So launching from Cape Canaveral, obviously powered flight up to here. Separation of the booster. Booster will continue on. It does still climb. A lot of people forget that. It does still climb up here to an apogee. Turns around, comes back. Still just in a ballistic trajectory. Goes into re-entry mode or re-entry burn is right here. And then the landing burn is obviously right at the end for landing. And the second stage continues on under powered flight up this direction here. And we head out, head out this way. So maybe if you're uh, in the southwest UK here, you might make it a view of it. I mean, you probably see it a little bit, a little ways, but it is kind of early in the day. You're probably not going to see it. It's going to be daylight, but that's a shame. But, but that's where we're launching today. Uh, let's see, what else did I have to show you here before we listen in to them? Got a quick picture of the, the new Cargo Dragon here. So obviously you can see that it looks very familiar to the Crew Dragon capsule. And you can even see it has these little, uh, you know, the little cutouts here that would be the Super Draco abort motors, but uh, the motors are not there. They're just, se they're completely sealed off. They're not installed at all. Different outer shell here that has these completely covered up. So same structure, really. Just a, a couple of differences there. No, no abort motors. So what does that mean if there was some sort of an abort during flight? Uh, I, I would like to know a little more details on that. I'm going to make some assumptions, which would be they learned this lesson after CRS-7, which was if there was a booster breakup, they didn't have on CRS-7, SpaceX's booster did break up. That was like way back in 2015 or something like that. And the capsule was fine but they had no programmed method in the capsule to activate the parachutes that early in flight. If they would have activated the parachutes, they could have saved the payload, even though the booster broke up. So I assume that this has a similar software mechanism in place, that if the booster breaks up, that it could separate the capsule. There's no abort motors to pull it away, but it could potentially separate the capsule and then just passively deploy the parachutes on the way down to save the payload that's in there. Now this also has the, the capability, has 30% more usable space inside the Dragon capsule. They've done some space savings. The Interestingly, the internal volume itself is actually very similar to the old Dragon, but it still has 30% more usable space because of some of the space savings they've done on the inside of the capsule. One of them is super simple, like the, the old Dragon, the the side hatch was on the side, obviously, and the top hatch. So they had to have clearance on the side hatch for late loading. But the top hatch where they docked to the International Space Station went to a different side. So they had like they had to have this area of the capsule cleared for the door and this area of the capsule cleared for the door. So you had all this wasted space. Now they've made the change where the side hatch and the top hatch both open to the same area. I just like. Mm -mm. so that both hatches open to the same area so that only that one section needs to be reserved for hatch opening. So little things like that that they've done for, for space savings. Uh, looks like SpaceX is live here now and we'll get switched over to them here in just a minute. I think we talked about the forecast a little bit here. We'll throw it up again just so you can see it. This is an old forecast now. This is 60% uh, go, 40% no go, but they've updated that this morning to 30% no go, 70% go. Things are looking, things are looking pretty good. I think we're in good shape here today. And then uh, just because I have it pulled up, we've got our, here's where the space station, here's where the space station is, where is the space station? Where is it? Right there. That's where it is currently. So obviously once it comes back over here and it passes by Florida, you're going to see it's not going to pass directly over the launch site. So it does have to do a little bit of plane correction here to get into the right orbital plane. But that's where that's where it will be located for launch time. It's going to pass right over that direction. One other thing uh, that I did want to mention here right before we switch over to SpaceX, it uh, looks like SpaceX is live here now but before we switch over just one last thing that i wanted to show because i thought this was really cool looking is uh they're launching this nano rack system up to the international space station here which is an airlock system that's going to be in the trunk 
of the the cargo dragon. It's not, uh, this is an old animation. This is from like 2018. So uh, it's showing the old dragon capsule, but it's back in the trunk, which they're gonna pull out and they're gonna end up uh, attaching it to the International Space Station there. And they can detach it and reattach it many times and use it for launching satellites from the space station into orbit. They're gonna use it for ejecting trash from the space station back to burn up in the atmosphere. And they may also use it to just put experiments on, then expose it to the vacuum of space and then reattach it. Um, so it's, it's kind of a cool looking system here. And that's gonna be in the trunk of our dragon capsule. Well, actually, I guess it's not the capsule, the trunk section that's attached to the dragon capsule, what I should say there. So kind of a cool looking thing. All right, so now let's get switched over to, let's see, let's get rid of the nano rack system. Nano racks, pause. Let's get, where's my SpaceX stream? Here's NASA. I wanna go to the, the actual dedicated SpaceX one though, cause I, that looks a little bit better to me. We're gonna, Switch that over here. Is our timing the same before I turn them up? Are we? No, timing is way different. So let's update the clock again to get closer to where to where they are. Um, let's see. A couple seconds behind there. There, I think that's updated. All right, let's. So a lot of let's excitement listen ahead in the next hour. Uh, today's, we are targeting an instantaneous launch window, uh, currently at T minus uh, 13 minutes and counting, with all systems currently go at both our Kennedy Space Center and SpaceX Mission Control in Hawthorne, California. So with that, let's take a closer look at today's Falcon 9 and Dragon spacecraft. This is going to be SpaceX's 24th launch this year. And as I mentioned, this is the cargo configuration of our new Dragon spacecraft. This version of Dragon is designed for up to five flights, while the previous version of Dragon can only support three. Dragon was also designed from the beginning to be reused, so we are hoping to refly this vehicle again in the future. To date, nine of our five CRS times. missions have launched flight proven Dragons. These dragons will get used. Today we'll be delivering five times. approximately 6,400 pounds of cargo to the space station, including critical materials to support dozens of science and research investigations that will occur on board the orbiting laboratory. Uh, we'll go into a little bit more detail on some of that research later on in today's webcast. This version of Dragon has 20% more volume and double the powered lockers. And in order to fly more cargo, we've made a few modifications to the spacecraft from the vehicle used on our Demo-2 and Crew-1 missions. Since there are no people on board, we've removed the Super Draco engines, which not only power Crew Dragon, but will also carry astronauts away from Falcon 9 to safety in the unlikely event of an emergency on the pad or during ascent. We've also removed two trunk fins used only for abort scenarios. And in the pressurized section, the seats and crew displays have been swapped for cargo racks. Lastly, the environmental control systems has also been reduced in both size and complexity. And while this Dragon will be flying for the first time, the Falcon 9 first stage, which is the bottom two thirds of the vehicle, is a flight proven booster. Today's mission CRS-21 will be its fourth flight. It previously supported the Demo-2, Anasys-2, and most recently, uh, the Starlink mission in October. To date, we've had 99 successful Falcon 9 launches. 42 of those were on reflown boosters. And today, we'll be attempting to recover the first stage on our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. You can see it on screen right now. Uh, and for those keeping count, if we do successfully land Falcon 9 today, this will mark our 68th booster landing and the 35th successful landing for our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You. And finally, above the first stage is our second stage. It has a single Merlin vacuum or MVAC engine, which ignites after the first stage separates. The second stage is what will carry Dragon to its intended orbit, allowing the spacecraft to eventually rendezvous with the International Space Station. All 
I have to see. They've been upgrading the pad mics, it seems like, on uh, minus 10 minutes, this pad. Uh, and 20 seconds and counting. The SpaceX team is working no significant issues. It's good. Uh, for propellant, the go no goal poll was conducted at the T minus 38 minute mark. And propellant loading began shortly after that, around the T minus 35 minute mark. At this point, RP1 fuel is completely loaded on the second stage and almost done on the first stage for liquid oxygen. Uh, it's currently underway on both stages and should complete around the T minus two minute mark. We're also loading helium gas into both stages. Falcon 9 uses helium as a pressurant to backfill the propellant tanks as liquid oxygen and RP1 are consumed by the Merlin engines during ascent. For Dragon, we've also began its startup sequence at the T minus 35 minute mark when it coordinated timing with Falcon 9. It's currently undergoing vehicle health checks with the next big step just before liftoff when the Dragon transitions to internal battery power. Uh, the range is standing by and ready to support. Uh, as for weather, a bit better than yesterday. Uh, we're looking at a 40% probability of violation with the primary weather constraint of thick clouds. Uh, there may also be some precipitation in the thick clouds that we are monitoring and will continue to monitor all the way until T0. Hmm. Precipitation. Uh, other than all that, right. with the launch team, Falcon 9, Dragon, and Range reporting green, and at T minus uh, nine minutes and counting, all systems are go for launch of CRS 21 today. That's good news. I wasn't expecting any precipitation, really, but that, that would be interesting. Uh, I mean, could be inner cloud precipitation. Is it really precipitation if it's not flying? Since SpaceX began flying Dragon in 2012, our vehicles have de delivered some really cool and vital scientific experiments to the orbiting laboratory, and today's mission is no different. Uh, Dragon will be carrying dozens of research payloads to the space station, including research from the National Laboratory, operated by the Center for the Advancement of Science in Space, or CASIS. Uh, there are more than 20 payloads sponsored by NASA and the National Lab on today's mission, representing more than 50 science experiments, all of which are intended to benefit life on Earth. Uh, let's take a few minutes and look at some of the groundbreaking research from CASIS that will be aboard the CRS-21 mission. Oh, yep, they got music. I was just about to say, they might have music for this. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll turn that down. I'll let you see it. Maybe we'll even turn on... Do they have captions? No, no captions here, of course. Uh, the NASA one might have captions, but they're not showing it on the NASA stream. The NASA stream's like, NASA stream's like 30 seconds behind. Hmm, interesting. All right, well, I guess I'll leave this up. I got no captions, but you can see what's happening. And uh, let me grab uh, grab a couple of questions. I do want to uh, give a little little shout little shout out here to Simeon. Simeon, Whew. I can say it. Simeon Ab Abanos, join the channel. Thanks for becoming a member, Simeon. Thanks for supporting us helping us do more of this stuff. And then I also saw a bunch of people send over some stars on Facebook. There's a new thing on Facebook. Uh, that, uh, But yeah, Ma Mark Lawson, thanks for the stars. Chris Baca, thanks for the stars. Robert Yanisek, thanks for the stars. Really appreciate your support. Thanks for supporting the channel. I'm glad you like what, uh, what we're doing here. Just wanted to give you a little shout out because I saw those come through. Uh, let's see. NASA streams 30 seconds behind because it's over budget. <laughs> uh, Let's go back. Let me see. Let me grab a couple questions that I saw that we missed. So this is pad 39A. Yes, launching pad 39A, Kennedy Space Center. Looks clear here at the Cape. It did look pretty clear on the webcast, but yeah, it's, they did say they were they were concerned about thick clouds. But he also said it was 40% chance of violation, which has been updated since then. So I'm wondering if he's just reading off the script, because I think it's been updated to 30% chance of violation and 70% go. So... I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we actually. It doesn't look like we have much to worry about today. I think. I think we're all. I think we're in good shape. Uh, why don't they, Why don't they make the space station bigger so they could add more satellites? I'm not sure. I understand that question exactly. If you're referring to the nano rack system, the nano rack system is kind of small, and that's because they literally took up the entire space of the the dragon's trunk area. Uh, they, if the dragon's trunk was a little bit bigger, they would have made it bigger. And they said that. They said if there were, even if it was one inch bigger in diameter, they would have made it one inch bigger on the nano rack system. But it's just not, not. There's not a big enough vehicle for them to launch on, at least not on the with the dragon. Uh, will you stream docking tomorrow? No, I'm not planning to do docking. We got star starship tomorrow. Starship SN8. 
We're gonna launch the starship tomorrow. Hopefully. Hopefully. We'll see. <laughs> but yeah, that'll be that'll consume my my day tomorrow. So hopefully you come back and join us for Starship. Uh let's see. What what other questions did we miss? Uh NASA's behind on SLS and their webs their webcasts. Yeah. Isn't that the truth? Uh, what, what, what were the websites I showed earlier? Uh, there's a bunch of them. Uh, it depends on which one you want to know. Uh, but there are there are commands in the chat that'll give you links directly to them. So whether it's uh, exclamation point weather, exclamation point stuff, exclamation point hazards, there's links to all of them if you use the, the chat commands here. Search experiments that Dragon will take up to the space station. For more information on the exciting microgravity research happening on the orbiting lab, you can follow at space underscore station on Twitter. Uh, we are currently under contract with NASA to resupply the space station through 2024 as part of a second commercial resupply services contract award. These missions will use the new version of Dragon, which can fly both cargo and people. And today's mission marks the first flight under this new contract. And we're super excited to continue this partnership with NASA. Flying NASA astronauts and helping keep the space station fully operational is a top priority for us here at SpaceX. You can already hear uh, the dragon coming to life. She's breathing. We're and continuing to, to count down for an 11.17 a.m. Eastern launch to the International Space Station. Uh, in these last few minutes, Falcon 9 is performing final health checks on its primary communications, avionics, and propulsion systems in preparation for, fight, for flight. Um, just to give you a recap of uh, what's been happening at the T minus seven minute mark, we began engine chillin. This is where we inject a small amount of super chill liquid oxygen to prepare the nine first stage engine turbo pumps for full propellant flow during flight. You might hear the call outs that engines are sufficiently chilled later on in the countdown. At the T minus four minute mark, the transporter erector, uh, which is that large truss structure next to Falcon 9, began to retract away from Falcon 9 uh, in preparation for liftoff. In about a minute around the T minus two minute mark, uh, liquid oxygen should complete loading on the second stage, and that will be the last of our propellant loading at the T minus one minute mark. Falcon 9 flight computers will enter startup mode and guide the rocket through the rest of the countdown. Shortly after that, the SpaceX launch director uh, will give the go for launch, and finally at T zero, the rocket is released from the hold down clamps for liftoff, after which the strong back fully retracts away from the rocket, clearing way for Falcon 9's ascent. Checkouts of the second stage thrust vector control actuators are also underway. Uh, you often hear people refer to this as an engine wiggle test. This is when we move the thrust nozzle slightly to make sure that the guidance hardware is a go for flight. We do the exact same checkouts on the engines for the first stage, except that occurs just seconds before ignition. Uh, Dragon is also performing its final health checkouts uh, to make sure all of its primary systems are ready for its rendezvous with the space station. Uh, the range remains a go for launch and uh, weather. We are still continuing to monitor. Um, let's listen into the nets oh, for the last see, few minutes of terminal count. You see the clouds coming in. Let me answer a couple of quick common questions that I've seen. How does Falcon 9 avoid all the space junk? Uh, we track all the junk that's out there and it's there's really not that much. Um, so there's plenty of room to get through. See that, uh, Some people ask, uh, can this be used as a lifeboat for astronauts if they have to escape? The answer is no. There's no life support systems on here. They wouldn't survive. There's nothing to support them. There's no seats. They wouldn't survive re-entry. There's no oxygen system. So no. Uh, this is the last big vent here. This is they're draining all the lines out of that transport erector structure that's next to the rocket there, draining all the liquid oxygen and all the fueling lines there. What time is Starship tomorrow? We don't know. You're going to have to turn on and notifications and subscribe. <laughs> one minute mark. Uh, both stages are beginning to pressurize for launch. Here we go. This is startup. We should get a go from the LD. Although we haven't heard much mission control audio. I don't hear any mission control audio, but I'm going to crank up the pad mics because they sound pretty good today. And Nope, it's not a replay. Turn that off reaching the T-minus 30-second mark. All systems 
our go for launch. Looks good. Looks like we're going to get CRS 21. The last mission of Dragon for this year. Do I have the replay text on here? No, I don't. Here we go. plus 50 seconds into flight. Falcon 9 is carrying our upgraded Dragon vehicle uh, to low Earth orbit. In a few seconds, we'll be passing max Q, which is the moment where the vehicle will experience the highest amount of aerodynamic pressures. It's kind of weird because they don't usually give us this split screen view this early, which is interesting. A couple of different things this time around. It's weird with no mission control audio. I should have turned. I should have put and that. And we've just passed up Max Q. I think I do have that up. Coming up are three events in rapid succession. The first event is Miko or main engine cutoff. This is where all nine of the Merlin engines on the Falcon 9 first stage will shut down in preparation for the second event, which is stage separation. Uh, this is where the first and second stage will separate from one another. And a few seconds after that, we'll have a second engine start one, where the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will ignite to boost Dragon to low Earth orbit. So we're already through max Q. Again, that is main up. engine cutoff, stage separation, followed by second engine start on the second stage. Main engine cutoff should happen around the T plus two minute and 31 second mark. All right, we're coming up on Miko here. Get that separation. Remember, no RTLS landing today. It's going to be a drone ship landing, which is different than previous cargo missions. So landing out at the drone ship instead of back at the launch site. There we go. Watch the stiffener ring break off right here on the engine bell. There's ignition. There goes the ring and right there. you just saw on screen, successful main engine cutoff. Uh, stage separation and ignition of our second stage. Uh, so he... on screen right now, you have two different views. Uh, on the right hand side is a view of our second stage Merlin vacuum engine. Uh, on top of that second stage is our Dragon vehicle. And on the left hand side is a view from the top of our first stage looking downward. Uh, the first stage will continue its descent back towards Earth and attempt landing on our drone ship, of course, I still love you, in a few minutes, uh, while the second stage continues to uh, take our Dragon vehicle to low Earth orbit. Uh, does the exhaust- If you're just joining us, this is the 21st commercial resupply mission for the International Space Station <laughs> for NASA. This is also SpaceX's 24th launch this year. And we're flying a cargo configuration of our new Dragon spacecraft. Mouse cam activated. I like that, Glenn. <laughs> um, does the exhaust change shape as the air thins? Yes, it does. So the exhaust from the rocket does spread out more, and that's actually one of the reasons... Now looking on the left hand side... That's one of the reasons why vacuum engine nozzles are so much bigger than sea level engine nozzles, because they're, you're trying to maximize that or accommodates that drop in pressure because you don't want you know you want all your thrust going straight out so yes the air the air density outside does affect the exhaust of the rocket and also affects the thrust of the rocket too land on our drone ship 
the first uh, of those two burns, the stage one entry burn, should happen around the T plus six and a half minute mark. Why does the foil jolt like that? Uh, generally, that's going to be like thruster activities that you're seeing. Uh, or it could be like gimbling really activities. Cool views of both the first and second stage. You notice that our grid fins on the first stage have also deployed. Those help to guide the first stage back during descent. Yep. So that's, I mean, the, the foil moving there, it's just, it's just moving through vibrations. Plumes of gas, that's nitrogen uh, coming from our attitude control systems. And those help to orient the first stage uh, as it continues to fall back towards Earth. And there it goes. Don't you need oxygen for an engine to burn fuel, says Nick over on Facebook. Yes, you do. That's why SpaceX has to bring their own oxygen with them. So not We're only is there away from the first much different two burns on the first stage. Much different than like your car that you have to fill up with just gas. You have to fill up the rocket with gas and liquid oxygen because you got to bring your own oxygen with you. There's no oxygen to for combustion. Trajectory nominal. Trajectory nominal. Oh, gee. All, all of a sudden, that the engine that audio you see on the right-hand side can produce over 220,000 pounds of thrust in a vacuum. That single engine is what is carrying Dragon to low Earth orbit right now. What, what is all the space debris? Most of it is going to be ice. Ice from the side of the rocket. Remember, it's super cold oxygen when it was on the pad. You get ice that freezes to the side, and all these vibrations and just break a few little seconds pieces away off. From our re-entry burn on the first stage. Watch for those three Merlin engines to relight and slow the stage down. You can also get some solidified... Stage one entry burn startup. Oh, there's our entry burn. Should have had the event. There's our entry burn. Here. Again, that's three engines slowing the first stage down before it hits that dense part of the Earth's atmosphere. Trajectory nominal. That's good news. Here's our entry burn, slowing down the first stage booster before it re-enters the atmosphere so that it doesn't break up. Stage one, entry burn shut down. There you go. And we are done with the first of two burns on the first stage. The second burn, the landing burn, will happen at the T plus eight minute and 18 second mark. Uh, that second burn should last for about 25 seconds. And uh, as that burn is happening, uh, we should also be having a, another major event for the second stage, second engine cutoff. We'll see if we can uh, hear that uh, as the landing burn begins. So it's normal to lose the camera footage there as they switch between tracking stations. Uh, so we've, we've lo looks like we probably lost the booster footage, but they'll pick it back up from the drone ship. We get the drone ship camera. As and we then wait for this landing burn. Uh, this is going to be our 68th attempt to recover our first stage, and we are going to be attempting to land on our drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean. Of course, I still love you. Second stage in terminal guidance. We may lose that, that drone ship camera as well. You get a little bit of vibration, but they've been pretty good lately. Stage one, landing burn startup. It's our landing burn. Show and it to us. audio confirmation. FTS is saved. That the first stage has begun its landing burn. Come on, show us the drone ship. Everything's looking great on the second stage right now. Yeah, that's great for the second stage. Show us the drone ship. Stage one, landing leg deploy. Landing legs. There it is. Stick it. Oh, this clean video. Come ship. on. Come Air back. Falcon 9. Uh, oh, 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 I think it's there. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. And uh, Falcon 9 has landed once again. That is the 68th successful first stage recovery. Uh, this mission also marks the 100th successful flight of Falcon 9. Uh, it's also the 35th time we've landed successfully on our drone ship. Of course, I still love you. Uh, during that uh, landing, we did get confirmation of second stage, second engine cutoff, also a confirmation of a good orbit. And second stage now has one last major task, commanding separation of Dragon just a few minutes from now. 
and we should have a video of Dragon separation from the top of the second stage. It should give us a nice view into Dragon's unpressurized cargo trunk area. So we'll be coming up here on Dragon separation here in just a couple of minutes. They're getting thing, getting. Uh... Uh, this is an animation to show where uh, each of the stages are uh, currently in this mission. That animation's a little bit different than usual too. The a lot second of things stage different. has turned off its Merlin vacuum engine and it's currently coasting, uh, awaiting for Dragon separation. So there's there... a view of the unpressurized section of. Dragon. That's exactly what I was just about to say. <laughs> now, for a typical CRS mission, after Dragon deploys, uh, we would be waiting for solar array deployment. But as a reminder, this is our new Dragon vehicle, and it has solar panels mounted along the surface of the trunk. You might be able to see it once Dragon separates, but uh, those solar panels are already activated and producing power. It's interesting, this little green line. Usually, we don't see this green line here. On their tracking, uh, their tracking view that they show us. We are about forty-five seconds away from dragon separation. It's inside the trunk. You can see. I'm pretty sure that's the nano rack system right there that we showed earlier. That little airlock system. Again, we are in a coast phase. Even though the engines are not on, uh, we are still coasting at pretty pretty fast pace. Twenty-seven thousand kilometers per hour. Was that sound that all of a sudden showed up? Hey, Mike, awesome. <laughs> Happy not birthday to you. Are we starting this again? The the birthday messages that it was not my birthday? <laughs> Thanks, Mike. You're awesome. Appreciate you support the channel there. <laughs> Thanks for the and super chat. Expecting dragon separation just a few seconds from now. We should have dragon separation any second. Usually the video is behind the actual separation event. Dragon separation there it is. confirmed. And there is a dragon separated from the second stage. Uh, what a cool view. Uh, See that right is, inside the trunk. If you've been following us, it uh, looks a lot different than our previous CRS missions. Uh, dragon is carrying approximately 6,400 pounds of cargo to the International Space Station on this mission. A small portion of the cargo represents supplies for the astronauts, things like food and clothing, but most of the cargo represents science going up to the space station. The International Space Station serves as the world's leading laboratory for cutting edge research and technology development that will enable human and robotic exploration of destinations beyond low Earth orbit, including the moon and even Mars. The Dragon vehicle is just beginning its journey. It has about 26 hours before reaching the space station. The next major event is nose cone deploy. And that's where we expose the guidance navigation and control sensors and docking mechanisms. Yeah, that should have already happened we won't too, but. Be able to see that on camera, uh, but we should be able to get confirmation of it. I still, I'm still trying to figure out what this, what they're showing here on this with these green lines on that orbit. I'm not sure what they're showing. Uh, and we do have confirmation of nose cone deploy. And Dragon is now, uh, there it is. Uh, Dragon is now on its way to the space station. Uh, again, over the next 26 hours, Dragon will perform a series of orbital height adjustment maneuvers with its Draco engines until it's within a few kilometers of the International Space Station and begins its autonomous docking process. The Dragon is set to dock at 1.30 p.m. Eastern tomorrow and remain at the space station for more than 30 days before returning to Earth with research and return cargo. And uh, there you have it, our fifth and final Dragon flight of 2020. Uh, with that, uh, that's going to do it for us here at SpaceX today. We had an on-time liftoff from K Kennedy Space Center, successful stage separation. We landed our first stage for the 68th time and uh, successfully deployed our upgraded Dragon vehicle into orbit. Today's mission also marked the 100th successful flight for Falcon 9. 
Uh, Dragon's arrival and docking to the space station will be streamed live starting tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. Eastern on NASA TV. Uh, Dragon will spend, again, about five weeks attached to the space station before returning to Earth with cargo and research. Keep an eye out for mission updates on NASA and SpaceX's social media accounts. Uh, we want to give a big thanks to the Range and Federal Aviation Administration for their support today. And of course, finally, thank you to everyone that has joined and tuned in for today's launch. Uh, until next time, have a great rest of your weekend. All right, well, so that's gonna that's gonna do it for them. Oh, I meant to go to this one here. We're gonna I'm gonna show a replay here in just a minute, but it's off. Dragon has successfully deployed from the second stage or separated from the second stage and will be heading to the International Space Space Station. It's gonna take them, I think it's like twenty about twenty-four hours or so. I forget the exact time, but it's it's almost a day to get to the space station. Uh, it has to do with orbital mechanics. And uh, if you want to know why it takes so long to get to the International Space Station, made a video about that. Uh, it's called Soyuz versus Crew Dragon. But same concept here, even though it's Cargo Dragon. So there's a video about that on my channel if you want to know why it takes so long to get there. But um, yeah, we'll show a replay here in just a second. I did want to give a shout out. I saw Michael Marsh joined as a member of the channel. Thanks, Michael. He actually joined the Rocket Engineer tier which means you get early access to two minute tuesday and we're going to talk about a little bit of this stuff on this week's two minute tuesday so you'll get early access tomorrow as soon as i get it finished and it'll be up and ready to go so uh so thanks michael thanks for uh, supporting the channel there um and there were a couple of questions that i wanted to see uh tom peterson said how does the first stage keep upright on the pitching deck of a ship is it partly because this, uh, at this point in the process the center of mass is fairly low yeah the center of mass would be lower at this point there's no fuel in the rocket i mean it's almost it's practically empty you've got those you know real heavy engines that are all on the bottom but uh they they generally also don't you know the drone ship has its own uh, station keeping thrusters to you know keep it in one spot so it's not moving very much and they also consider like what the wave height is and the the period of waves for uh, the the booster recovery as well. So they got to make sure conditions are ideal. And it so the, the deck isn't really pitching around that much. And uh, but we have seen the booster scoot to the side a little bit. That gets a little bit uh, squirrely, but usually shortly after landing, they have the little uh, octagrabber. It's like a gigantic Roomba <laughs> that goes out crawls underneath the the booster hooks onto it holds it down um so uh to try to keep it safe but uh let's go back to a couple things i just saw something on the stream so i'm gonna back it up here in a second because i want to talk about something that i just saw on the stream but i'm gonna get to a couple other questions here first before we get to that and then we'll uh then we'll show a little bit of the replay here Somebody wants to know, do they do laundry on the ISS? Uh, no, I don't believe they do. I don't think they have, I don't think they do laundry on the ISS. Let's see. Yeah, we did get, we got a, a couple of new things that we saw here today. What's the silver ball inside the trunk? That is the NanoRax airlock system, which we showed a little bit earlier. Maybe I'll show it here again after the replay. But that is, it's uh, an airlock system. That's because uh, remember that the trunk is uh, also a, a cargo, an unpressurized cargo storage container. So they're they're storing things in the trunk that they'll retrieve with the robotic arm on the space station. So let's get back to this. We'll throw up the replay text so everybody knows this is a replay. And what the one thing that I did want to show, let me go, let me go over here. We'll put our replay text on as well. Over here, where should I put this? Put it up here, maybe, or something. Um, of course, now I, now I missed the what I was going to show. All this water coming out of the water tower here. A lot of people that confuses a lot of people. It's basically just an overflow. Uh, they, that's that's uh, they know the water tower is full at that point. Um, so it always pours out here. It's not a uh, it's not a problem. It's not a leak or something like that. The water just it always overflows at pad 39A once they fill the water tower and get it ready. That's for the water suppression system. So once they activate the water suppression system, it all just comes flowing out onto the launch pad to uh, dampen the sound, the vibrations from the sound, so it doesn't ruin the pad, ruin the rocket, ruin the support structures there. Um, but yeah, just uh, I like to point out that that is normal. All the water flowing out.
Let's see, Tori, are you broadcasting the SN8? Yes, I will. What time? I don't know. Depends on what time they launch. Sometime tomorrow, hopefully. So uh, that's the point where I tell you, you got to turn on notifications and subscribe to the channel because you'll get about 10 minutes of notice. If you're in our Discord server as well, which is free, you don't have to, you can join the Discord server, chat it up with our space community. If you're a member of the Discord server, uh, I will ping everybody when I do go live as well. So. This is not live, says Roger. Roger, you missed it. You missed it, Roger. You're late to the party. <laughs> now we're showing a replay. Let's go back to uh, a couple other questions. Uh, well, actually, we probably should listen in. We'll listen in once more. Let's put our replay text up so, so people like Roger don't get super confused and super annoyed when they find out that this is not live. It's a replay. I'm live. SpaceX has already done their thing, though, so we'll put that up there. And we'll, uh, for launch. we'll listen in to the, the launch again. It was kind of cool, although they've they have awesome pad mics, the last but then recently they've been cutting over and away from the pad mics, which I don't like. I like this part right here. You gotta listen. I'm gonna back it up. It's just like everything on this channel that has to do with animals. I'm gonna call that the space seal. Because if you listen really carefully, and I don't know what it is that makes that sound. So, uh, uh, could be the, I think it's the turbo pump spinning up maybe, but um, but you'll hear, you hear this kind of venting sound, and then all of a sudden you'll hear this big, like, a little bit of a bang. Like, and then you'll hear the space seal. If you listen really, really carefully, you might have to crank up the volume. I'll be quiet so you can crank up the volume. But you hear the, the big bang, and then you'll hear... <laughs> it's the, the space seal. I think it's I think it's a turbo pump spinning up, but listen for the listen for the space seal. Ready? Minus uh, 30 seconds. It's right about just after 10 seconds. Ready? Here comes the space seal. Right there, did you hear it? Let me try it one more time. Right there, it's, it's really quiet. Sometimes you can hear it better than normal, but there it is. It's not, hold on, it's not the bang. It's right after the bang, like a second after the bang. 21. Make that sound again. No, I'm not making it again. <laughs> you have to rewind if you want to see that again. Right there. It's, re it's hard to hear this time around. All right, let's watch it launch. plus 50 seconds into flight somebody mentioned the birds there that was kind of interesting if we back, back that up we, you can see the where were the birds right at right at launch there were a whole bunch of a whole bunch of birds flying around I don't, I don't think they were close to the pad i think it made it look like it in the camera angle there but right there you can see the birds in the, in the bottom corner there All right, I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna turn that sound down. Uh, maybe we'll keep it like halfway up. And uh, we'll get to uh, get to a couple questions here while we hang out for a bit and chat it up.
50 plus 50 seconds probably a big flight. surprise for that bird that was there <laughs> just minding his own business and all of a sudden ah! in a few seconds we'll be passing max q which is the moment where the vehicle sounds like hydraulics possibly retracting clamps could be i don't know what that sounds like maybe i don't know what that seal sound is somebody said you probably need headphones for it yeah this time around you probably you might need headphones it's, sometimes it's louder than others uh this time it was pretty quiet i can hear it in my headphones so you, yeah you might need headphones to hear it what would happen if this mission failed do the guys up there have enough food yes so this is not they don't uh they they have plenty of supplies to last that even the next resupply mission or even probably the one after that too um so they have plenty of supplies up there and they do that specifically just in case things do fail um so if this failed like it would be devastating but like the people on board the space station are not going to be in danger they have enough supplies to to c carry on what's the purpose of the water tank the sound suppression system uh it's they dump water onto the bottom of the rocket there to dampen the vibrations caused by you know all that sound and activity of the rocket there so uh just to make sure it doesn't damage stuff Will you stream the entire day tomorrow for SN8 or only for Team? Yeah, not the entire day. It depends on it, it, a lot. There's a lot of unknown stuff for SN8 tomorrow. I won't be live for the entire day. I'm only going to be live. Uh, well, I don't even know whether it's 10 minutes before or half an hour before. I don't know. It really depends on what SpaceX is going to is going to do for tomorrow. So I'll be watching like everybody else trying to see what's happening and uh we'll I'll give you updates in discord and then uh, at some point we'll go live hopefully and see an actual launch but uh, the plan is to just watch and see what happens tomorrow for sn8 so uh, the only thing that i know for certain is that i will not be streaming all day <laughs> so it won't be all day but uh I still I have to work tomorrow, so I, I still have to do work tomorrow, but I will be keeping an eye on it and we'll be live at some point tomorrow. Twenty six hours instead of four hours for Soyuz. Yeah, again, uh, it is going to take it is going to take. Yeah, I think twenty six hours. That sounds about right. And it was somewhere twenty something hours for this trip compared to Soyuz's. Uh, they did three hours back in uh, October. And if you want to know why there's a big difference, you got to go check out my video. Because uh, I did a video, Soyuz vs. Crew Dragon, that explains why the difference. Where does the second stage go? The second stage will, uh, it's going to deorbit and come back and break up in the atmosphere. It's going to deorberate. Right, exactly. Going to deorberate gonna deorbit come back and land or well not land break up in the atmosphere million pieces i guess it will land just in a million pieces <laughs> deorberate it's gonna deorberate let's see do they have enough wd-40 yeah no word on if they're using wd-40 which is kind of interesting I did see I saw a picture of the starship a lot of people get confused on like why uh, when I put out the atlas and I talked about them needing WD-40 for stainless steel a lot of people confused about that like stainless steel doesn't rust uh, which is not entirely true like stainless steel resists corrosion much better than uh, regular steel uh, but it can still rust if the if the outside gets corroded that outer uh, layer of, I forget what it's called, is uh, eroded away. It's just like if you ever, like, uh, if you have stainless steel and you, like, scrub it, if you scrubbed it with a Brillo pad and then leave it out, you would see that it would rust right where that Brillo pad is. And uh, that that outer coating can get worn away by stuff like, you know, the sea, you know, the sea air, the, the sea water, sea air can... Uh, erode that you can also get some erosion of it like during the actual assembly process so like areas where where welds are or things are coming together there's a there's kind of a cool picture of starship from uh i think it's from boca chica gal that shows uh you know kind of how the areas where pieces are coming together 
are you know not as clean and polished looking as some of the other areas so so uh stainless steel can still corrode and rust and that's why they used uh wd-40 That's for the Atlas. They use WD-40, not for SN8. Well, we don't know if they used, if they're using WD-40 for SN SN8, but they used it for the Atlas rocket. That's what it was invented for. That's what I talked about in my Starship video from last week's Two Minute Tuesday. Why is the foil pulsing like that? So it's basically just vibrations. Uh, you're gonna have thruster activity, and uh, you'll you'll have active, you know, gimbling activity from the actual rocket itself. But it's mostly it's, thruster activity really the cold gas thrusters is going to create lo little bits of vibration which is going to cause that uh that little bit of pulsing there will you stream docking tomorrow no i'm not planning to stream docking for this uh unfortunately because we're going to be tied up tomorrow for sn8 Do you think Blue Origin will ever catch up to SpaceX? Um, I, well, I don't know about catch up. I mean, I think uh, it, it's hard to, it's kind of a generaliza generalized statement there. I mean, I think Blue Origin will get to the point where they can, they can start doing stuff like this. It's gonna be, it'll be tough to kind of catch up. I don't know, maybe someday. They got a long ways to go though. And it's also tough to see what they're doing because they do everything in secret, so. Can you swap the cams? The chat is blocking the view. I don't have any chat. There's no chat on my on my stream. Is SN8 confirmed for tomorrow? Uh, confirmed is a strong word. <laughs> um, SN8 is on for tomorrow. Uh, the TFR is on. Uh, but we'll probably know a little bit later today if they give what what we will be waiting for is you'll see if somebody like a Boca Chica gal gets a notification from local authorities that she has to vacate the town because there is an exclusion zone there. So everybody that lives in Boca Chica has to leave. Like normally if they do a static fire test, they give a notice to residents that says that they have they should uh, like strongly recommends that they leave their house, but they can stay in the town. But for this particular flight event, they can't stay in the town. They have to leave. They have to get out of there. So, uh, so we'll probably be looking for that a little bit later today if it hasn't come out already. I haven't been paying attention obviously since I'm here with you, but that might come out later today about that notification to leave. How many uses can you get out of this rocket before it has to be scrapped? So in theory, the Falcon 9, the Falcon 9 has already been used uh, up to seven times. It's designed to last 10 flights before having major refurbishments, and it's uh, designed to allow for 10 major refurbishments. So that would mean, in theory, each booster should be able to last up to 100 launches. We're not even anywhere close to that. The highest we've gotten so far is seven. So... We haven't even hit the 10 first. So let's see, let's see if we get to 10 and we'll see how long they how long they go for. Mike says is that a leak? Is what a leak? You're probably seeing the liquid oxygen vent port. I'm guessing. If we back up, you're talking about like this right here. This is a liquid oxygen vent port. That's normal. It's not a leak. Will the astronauts get their supplies today? They'll get them tomorrow. Uh, it's going to dock tomorrow to the International Space Station. Why did SpaceX choose Boca, Ke Boca Chica? It's right next to the residential area. They're literally testing rockets in their front yard. SpaceX did try to buy all of Boca Chica. Um, but yeah, I mean, Boca Chica, it's an area where there's not a lot of population and it's by the ocean. I mean, good luck finding other people areas like that <laughs> it's very hard to find real estate that's like a lot of real estate right by the ocean that's not occupied um and boca chica just happened to be like the least occupied area they could find and also that an area that was good for orbital mechanics 
as far as launching rockets you're they're going to be closer to the equator uh, so it's similar to why they choose cape canaveral it's on the you know the, they can launch right over the gulf of uh, gulf of mexico there um so so yeah there's a uh there's not not a lot of choices and that that's the best one they could make how much fuel is left in the second stage half? Not a lot. A lot of I've showed the the fuel graph before. I didn't have it today, but we've showed that in the past. Why is there a gap between seco and deploy? Uh, a lot of times they are they're going to reorient the the craft the the vehicle. So they're you know they may be burning in in this direction and they're just going to tilt it up like this. They're going to get their get it in the correct attitude. They're going to check out their systems. They're going to make sure they have communication with it. Uh, so just gives it's not a long period of time a long period of delay there but just gives them time to get it in the correct orientation make sure they're communicating with everything start up their systems make sure it's prepared to be separated and then and then separate do we know how baby yoda is doing up there um no haven't seen baby yoda in a while doesn't baby yoda have a new name now spoiler alert for Anybody that haven't, hasn't seen The Mandalorian? <laughs> I just saw that the other day. I'm not going to say the name out loud. If you guys want to spoil it in the chat, you can spoil it, but I'm not going to say it out loud. <laughs> Still amazing to see what SpaceX has accomplished in 20 gears. It's pretty amazing. Uh, has it, I, don't think, I don't think it's been 20 years yet, has it? I think we're a little less than that. When did SpaceX? Isn't it like? Isn't it like fourteen years or 15, thirteen years somewhere in that range? I don't know when they started things up. Maybe it was like two thousand. When was Falcon One? Is it like two thousand? Maybe it's two thousand two. I don't know. Can't remember the dates off the top of my head. What was the date of the first Falcon One? Obviously, they would have been formed before the launch date. But oh yeah, there you go. Falcon two thousand two. Yeah, all right. Yeah, maybe it was. I guess you're. I guess you're right. Red, twenty years. Hmm. Pretty close to twenty years, because they would have been obviously. Oh, for, founded May 6, 20, 2002. Yeah. All right. So that. Pretty close to twenty years. Hmm. Dragon separation control. And there is a dragon separated from the second stage. Do they have to check on shipping before they launch over the Gulf, or do they just launch? So when they're anytime they're launching over the ocean, I mean they're gonna they're gonna have hazard zones to alert aircraft and ships. And so usually those hazard zones would be like where the drone ship landing is gonna be. And uh, right around the launch site. Those are kind of the general hazard zones. Everything else in between, I mean ships can just go and do whatever, do their normal thing. Question, can the second stage be retrieved, brought back to Earth, and used again? No. Second stage on the Falcon 9 is not reusable. No plans for reusability. Uh, it's a very tough problem to, re to recover the second stage. They had considered it, potentially explored it, but second stage is traveling way faster than the first stage is. Has to bleed off so much more energy than the first stage does. And there's no fuel left. So it's a difficult problem. So... If you add more fuel so it can bleed off speed, then you're not going to get into as high of an orbit. If you add systems to handle the extra energy without bleeding off the speed, like that's extra weight. You're not going to... So it's a tough, tough problem. They're not doing it with the second stage on Falcon 9. They'll go to Starship. Starship will be fully reusable. There you go. Justin Gibb, one of our members. Thanks for your support. Justin said Falcon 1's first flight was March 24th, 2006. There you go. So 2006 was the first Falcon 1. And uh, according to Red, the company was formed in May 2002. May 6, 2002. So yeah, I guess it has I guess it has been about almost 20, 20 years that SpaceX has been around. But about, uh, what is that, like 14 years since their first flight. Yeah, second stage returns as dust. It's recycled eventually. Yeah, it comes up in a million pieces. Does the second stage burn out in the atmosphere? Yes. After deployment, they will. So you get the, you get your your rocket goes up there. You get deployment that continues on. Second stage turns around. It comes back, breaks up into a million pieces. Ends up looking like my other 
my other second stage that, that broke. There, that one broke. Have a first stage too, somewhere over there. Okay, get it. Attached to the computer here. First stage for scale. Here we go. First stage. I can't even fit it on the camera. First. Whoa. <laughs> Almost fell off the chair. Wouldn't that have been an interesting live event? There's no back to this chair. It's just a stool. Almost fell off. Look at it. First stage. Second stage. Dragon. Hopefully we don't break it on the camera. <sighs> Separation. Look at the look at the size difference here. It's not gonna focus. It's gonna focus on, on me. Here we go. There. Focus on that. Get this stuff out of the way. Look at the side. Focus on this, not me. I gotta paint this. I 3D print there. Anyways, let's set this down before I break something. Nobody at me in the comments about how TJ's is bigger. <laughs> Um, all right, let's go. Actually, I wanted this view here. Super glue. Yeah, I try actually tried to super glue that. It didn't it didn't last very long. SpaceX thinking about recovering the second stage at some point. Nope, they will not recover the second stage. No plans. They thought about it for a bit. Not happening. All right. Oh, savvy <laughs> time wasters help Tori reach 50k subscribers by subscribing now. Well, that's nice of you. Thank you for saying that. We're getting very close to it. So I appreciate all of you guys that are here with us and hanging out. It's uh, it's always fun. Now this is the point where I would normally be done with the broadcast, but I just I've decided that I don't feel like I'm done, so I'm opening Kerbal. <laughs> I, I would normally end right here, but I'm going to play Kerbal just for fun while you guys are... And if you want to hang out and chill with us and see how awful I am at it, that's cool. If you don't, that's cool too. This is going to... This is uh, Space Lobster Overtime. I'll keep answering your questions. And we're going to try to... We're going to... Maybe we'll try to launch a, a, a dragon. Probably, it's probably gonna be a crew dragon, but we're gonna we're gonna launch a dragon. Place it. Maybe we'll. I don't know. I haven't decided what we're gonna do. But this is kind of impromptu. I was about to end the broadcast, and I was like, you know what? I want to play some Kerbal. <laughs> how much is this mission costing SpaceX, and how much are they getting paid for it? Ah, uh, that's it. Well, I don't know that off the top of my head. Um, I don't know the probably look that up i don't know the cargo dragon costs on the crs2 contract um does anybody does anybody in chat know that offhand let me see i got it i got my dragon 2 resources here do i have costs in here uh target Target launch price for Dragon Flight. That's Crew Dragon. Um, in 2000, 2012 was 160 million that they were that they were targeting for Crew Dragon. 160 million per launch, and that would be NASA's price. I don't think space. I don't think SpaceX has ever disclosed like what it actually cost. Uh, cost them where is the uh let's see commercial resupply commercial resupply services crs2 crs phase two do we have a cost here uh they nasa awarded 2.6 billion on three contracts with a combined not to exceed value of 14 billion So that's combined value. Do we know how much each provider got? Maybe somebody else. This is hard to like. Falcon 9 costs 62 million per launch. Uh, 
Yeah, what I'm looking up now, I wanted to see what the NASA cost is. What they're paying for the CRS two CRS phase two contract. Because that should be public information. Let's see, do we have a source here? Audit of the commercial resupply mission. Well, I'm, we're still waiting for Kerbal to come up, so while we're waiting on that. According to this audit, the average cost on SpaceX missions is $191.3 million per mission. Uh, let's see. Maximum total $14 billion, so that's the not-to-exceed amount. As of December 2017, NASA awarded $2.6 billion in task orders for eight CRS-2 missions. That's for all the companies. Initial 2016 projections of TRS were approximately 400 million more expensive than CRS-1. Yeah. Yeah. Of those integration costs, 4.4 million paid to Sierra Nevada. That's like an upfront payment that they had. I don't know. I guess I probably ought to show you guys what I'm looking at here instead of looking at my face. You guys can see, at least see this. I'm kind of going through this audit, this NASA Inspector General report, trying to see if there was a dollar amounts, but I don't know. This might take too long to, to read through. This is way too many pages. How many pages is it? 55 pages. I'm not reading 55 pages on live stream, so. 14, 28, 28 billion to launch. That is, uh, that is not right. <laughs> That's too much. Uh, I think the not to exceed is 14 billion, and that's for all three launch providers on this, the entire CRS-2 contract. It's 14 billion, so it is not 28 billion per launch. <laughs> I think even the space shuttle was like 1 billion to launch, and this is way cheaper than the space shuttle. How do you get your other video of SpaceX versus Soyuz to the ISS? Um. Well, I'm sure somebody could give you a link to it, but if you go to the Overlook Horizon channel on YouTube, it should be the very the very first, uh, if you just scroll down on the channel, it's like the very first video listed. This is time, time for the Kerbal Space Program after party. We get rid of our events list. We'll get rid of the replay text. Get some get some coffee going. Refuel. Refuel the, the Tory engines. We'll get it. What should we? I think we got. I think we got to build a dragon, right? Lobster Fest is on. Ready to go. So uh, I see Godless says uh, SpaceX and NASA are adopting the old ways of bringing astronauts back by landing on water. What happened to the idea of space shuttle landing using a runway? This is a good. This is a good question because a lot. This is something a lot of people point out because it seemed like landing on a runway was, was like more advanced. It was the better way to do things. Like we're progressing technology, but we found out that that is not necessarily the best way to do things. Uh, the the whole landing on land is complicated. It's expensive. It's you need. You know, you need a runway, first of all. You need the heat shield tiles. Then, like, how are you going to get 
you needed to to put a landing gear through the heat shield tiles, which meant you, you had to have a way for your heat shield tiles to break open and separate so you could get a landing gear through, and that was complicated. So uh, there's there's a lot of complicated factors. Uh, there's also like the whole redundancy thing, like you know, there's not really there's not much redundancy landing on a landing on a runway. I mean, fortunately, we had no... We didn't really have any issues of the actual landing process itself. I mean, really, you know, the I wouldn't count the Columbia disaster as a, a landing problem. It was like a re-entry problem, but... But, uh, yeah, I mean, it turns out we just found out that, that the capsule systems were so much less expensive and easier to maintain and safer in the long run. And that's, I mean... That's ultimately what we're going for. Okay, let's get... Actually, I think I have one. Do we launch... Uh, do we launch Dragon? There you go. Justin Gibbs says, Spaceflight now says an average of 152.1 million per launch. Ours Technica says $71,800 per kilo or kilogram. Interesting. And those are, Justin, those are for the CRS-2 contract? The new one, or that's the old contract? Don't forget the landing gear. CRS-2, said John. All right, thanks for looking that up, Justin. All right, let's see. Let's try and... Uh, do I have one that's already built? Uh, let's see. Don't save. I don't care about that. Uh, Uh-oh, missing parts. Oh, no. Why am I missing parts? <laughs> what? Which parts am I missing? So here we go. Here's our... Here's our cargo dragon. I don't know which parts we're missing, but close that up. We don't need that. We even got a transport erector here. <laughs> don't know what part we're missing, but I'm sure they were optional. It's fine. It's fine. Um, okay. <laughs> I got engines. That's promising. Okay, well... Let's try... Where are we going to fly it to? We don't have... I don't have anything in orbit to dock with, do I? Try to dock with something. We could show you... We could show... Uh, clear the launch pad and proceed. Yeah. All right. I'll show, we'll show you kind of rendezvous and docking because that's a little uh, counterintuitive. Let's see if... Missing parachutes again? Oh, that's a good question, Justin. Do we have parachutes? <laughs> I don't know if we have parachutes. We probably... Do we need those? We probably need those. Uh, but, yeah. Rendezvous and docking can be kind of a confusing process for a lot of people. So, I think we'll try that. Do I have... Oh, yeah. It says we have parachutes. We're good. We have parachutes. We're okay. All right. That's transport erector. That's second state. Make sure our staging is good. That's separation of the capsule. That's... How does the capsule itself separate? I don't know. We'll figure that out later. Okay. Gray wants to know what we're doing here. Flight simulate. Yeah, so this is the after party. We had our launch earlier. Now we're just sticking around. We're going to have a little uh little extra. This is bonus time. This is the this is the Space Lobster after party. Successful launch. Now we're doing more. Sebi says, shoot the ISS up first. I don't... I don't have an ISS. I don't think. Let me, uh... I don't have one pre-built. I don't necessarily want to spend all day building one, but... I could... Do we have... Let's see if I have some sort of... Space Station Core. What's this? 
We can have a little tiny station. A little tiny space station. Maybe we can launch a little tiny space station. Wait, how can I? I can't load two vehicles at once, can I? So I want to put little tiny space station on Falcon 9. Or even Falcon Heavy, for that matter. We can launch a... Here's our... Here's our Falcon Heavy. Do we, uh... Little baby ISS. <laughs> um, you can load another if you click merge. How do I? Uh, how do I do that? Somebody, somebody, explain. Oh, there's a merge button right there. So I can take that and I can do maybe get our ba where's baby space station baby space station where are you at there it is baby space station merge oh god that's awesome I didn't know that was a thing see I don't play Kerbal that often let's see should we do we flip it over why well, can't what is this thing Oops, 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 nope, go back. That there. That out of here, what is this? It's like a probe core. Get rid of that. Uh-oh, now I did it. Now I'm stuck, I can't. Can't do anything, because I don't, I guess I should have kept the probe core. go I lost it there it is I can't get to it it's in the middle of the Falcon Heavy now how do I I can't get to it there we go I got it I got it I got it we're okay okay put that up there oh what do we do with this do I have to like what am I doing help me <laughs> Um, how can I get Kerbal Space Program? Uh, you can get it on Steam or go to KerbalSpaceProgram.com. Oh, look at that. We even have a Nightbot command for it. I didn't know we had a command for that. <laughs> All right, let's get... So somehow we got to get this... On the probe core, I guess. I don't know how we're going to do that. We need some kind of probe core to attach to our space station so we have some kind of control. But she doesn't want to attach to anything. Can I just, like, surface mount it? <laughs> Just want to surface mount it to the... Just like that. <laughs> Doesn't count, does it? Well, this is not working. Holding alt or control, lock stuff onto the points, can help with attaching stuff. Let's try that. Somebody giving me Kerbal tutorials. I don't, I don't play enough that I am super advanced. Let's see. Take this, dock it to that. Alt, no, control, no, I got nothing. Can I attach it? No, can I attach? Wait, I see some like, how about if I do like this? Oh, there we go, okay. We got something attached. But I, I don't necessarily want it there. It's got two attachment points, it looks like, only on the sides. It's kind of a shame, but... Will it still fit if I... 
Let's see. Can I, I might have to get rid of this docking port. And we'll put the docking port, or put this right on our... Wait, I gotta, think I gotta do it this way. No? Nope, doesn't want to... Really? It doesn't like... What happened to our probe core? Oh, our probe core came detached. How did that happen? Okay, let's try this again. There we go. It's a little bit... I don't think it's going to fit in the payload fairing. I can't fit the payload fairing on here. I think our I think baby space station's too big. Baby space station gonna be too big for the Falcon Heavy. You know what we could do? I know what we can do. I have an idea. Oh wait, no, don't save. Let's just take we'll cheat. With that, because we're gonna have a hard enough time rendezvousing anyway, so we'll, we're gonna cheat. We're gonna take Baby Space Station, and we'll just cheat. We'll just uh, we'll just put it straight into. We're gonna use a cheat to put it straight into orbit, and then we'll then we'll really launch the Falcon and dock with it, the Dragon. Watch this. We'll just go like this, like this, boom. In space. Ta-da! <laughs> so much easier. Imagine if SpaceX could do that. Okay, now. Let's go back here. Just yeet it to space. <laughs> All right, here we go. Open. What are we flying? We're flying uh, cargo. Load that. Okay, good to go. Okay, let's see if we can. See if this works. Okay, you know what we need? We need some more dramatic music. Which one's our dramatic music? Is it this one? No, I think it's... Oh, it's this one. There it is.
Falcon 9 is pitching down range. Oh, we're wait a minute, we're going <laughs> we're going the wrong direction. Wait a minute, go this way. Wait, not that way. Oh no. We already ruined it. That's alright. This slight correction. We forgot the roll program. We forgot a roll program. Uh-oh. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, we're alright. We're gonna save it. <laughs> we're, bit, we're heading the wrong way. We're going into polar orbit. <laughs> Probably should have looked at the nav ball there. Alright, we're good now. What's our apogee? Alright, we're okay. We're okay. Saved it. I imagine this is how this is how it goes in uh, mission control. Are you gonna try to land it? I don't have I don't have the mod to land it anymore. I don't think it's supported on the new version of Kerbal. I should try to just like force it to install. Who knows what the what's the keyboard shortcut for abort? Getting a little bit of, we gotta throttle down a little bit. We're going a little fast here. And Miko, separation. We had our our separation was uh was a little bit late. I think we're I think we're in a not in the right orbit. <laughs> That's going to be a problem. Sorry, right, we got this. We're okay. We're good. We're, it's going to look a little counterintuitive because we're burning straight down, but we're trying to extend our... Oh, oh, oh now we're going too far. We're trying to extend our orbit here, so we're watching these numbers up here. They're kind of probably tiny for you to see, but I'm trying to prevent the apogee from climbing too high, but get the the perigee to climb, so we can get a somewhat circular orbit. There we go. There we go. Here comes our oh, 36. Oh, all right. That's too much. Okay. Well, where's our space station? Is that it? No, that's our that's our first stage, which is now in a higher orbit than we are. Where'd our space station go? Space station core. There it is. I don't even know altitudes. Eighty-six kilometers, and our apogee is one hundred and fourteen kilometers. So, I mean, I suppose we could go on a higher orbit, but. That's not, not exactly what we wanted. Well, let's try, where's our Apogee? Our Apogee's up there. And our Perigee is 62, so we're not in a stable orbit right now. Not a good parking orbit right now. We also didn't time this very well because we're our phase angle between the space station and our ship are uh, not exactly ideal. So, all right, let's go to let's go to our next maneuver. Fast forward. Uh-oh. Oh, no, I missed the maneuver. Shoot.
Well, I ruined it. Oh, well, it's not too bad. We can save it. We're okay. We're gonna make it. That's why they don't fast forward in real life, right? All right, let's just... Let's just tap just a little bit. Okay. All right, so we're kind of circular, but not exactly. Now we need to, like, wait for the space station to catch up to us. So let's go like this. Set this as our target. Let's get somewhat close. This is going to be tough. Whoa! So, we're in a higher orbit right now, which means the space station has to catch up to us. There it goes. Almost caught up. So, space station's traveling faster. It's gonna catch up to us. That's pretty... Pretty close. We might have... We probably should have... Done that a little... A little sooner, but that's okay. Now, ideally, our orbital planes are not exactly perfect, which is going to be a problem for drifting. So... We should... Well, let's get... Let's get in the... At least the right orbital plane here for... For a minute. We probably should do this with the Dragon itself instead of the Falcon 9, because that's a little, a little too powerful. But we'll bring it in just a little bit. We're bringing our Perigee down so it matches the Perigee of... of our space station that we're going to dock to. Which is 86 kilometers. So we're at 100, 99, 98, 97, 96, 95, 94, 93, 92, 91. Wait, here's our. We got an intercept here already. We might even. What is that? Separations at. Uh, we're about 40 kilometers apart, so. Let's get, let's line up this, let's get this a little closer. Nope, that's not, that's worse. When all else fails, cheat. I'm not at that point yet. We're doing okay so far. I don't know. We're still a ways away. There we go, We're bringing it in, 36, 35, 34. We're bringing in our separation here. Let's see if we can bring it in as close as possible. That's probably as close as we can get on this pass. So, let's warp to here. We're gonna fast forward to there. For a couple of minutes. There we go. That's done. Now we're going to do another burn to try to match up our orbits here. Let's see if we can... Burn. Actually, we probably want to burn straight to the target here. Nope, that's the opposite of what we want to do. Now, we probably should jettison the second stage, too, eh? There we go. So we're changing our 
our relative speed relative to the target here. I'm gonna try to get us traveling at about the same speed. And then we'll we'll jettison the second stage. We'll get rid of that. Look at that. We're almost almost identical on speed. So we're very close. Oh, except now we're going to deorb. <laughs> Uh-oh, that's a, that's a problem. It's going to deorberate. Yeah, that's that's not going to be good. Okay, now we need to burn to the target. Let's let's get rid of the let's separate. We'll get rid of the second stage. <laughs> Goodbye. Don't need you anymore. We do need to open this shroud up so we get our forward thrusters. And... We need to go anti... Oh, no, wait. Go to point to the target. We're going to use the forward thrusters. I think we're gonna burn we're gonna burn towards the target here. So where is our target? We're pointing at the target. Let's see if can we do it? We're kinda our distance is uh pretty high. Let's use the forward thrusters here. See if we can close the gap. Uh oh. Uh oh, this is a problem. <laughs> We're almost gonna re enter the atmosphere. Oh no. Oh no, we should have done this higher up. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, this is a problem. We're going down. <laughs> Mayday! Mayday! We're going down. <laughs> climb! Climb! Sound the alarm. I need a... I need a... I need, like, a submarine dive whistle. <coughs> climb! Climb! <coughs> <laughs> oh, no. What's our perigee? Oh, okay. We're okay. We saved it. We're good now. Okay, so now we need to go ret... Uh, let's see. We'll go. Where's our closest... Our closest separation coming up here. At 15 kilometers. All right. Here we go. We got this. We're okay. Woo! We're all right. This is not the most fuel-efficient way to do this. But that's all right. We got this. One of my mods sent me something. What? You don't hear music? You hear music now? turn that up. It's kind of loud in my ears when I turn that up that high, but... I wish I could... I need, to like, a better sub-mix so that they're not... so the music is not so loud in my ears. I think I can do that. Hold on. Let me change... Let me change my sub-mix. There, that's a little, that's better. Now it's not, you guys can hear it, but it's not like crazy loud in my ears anymore. Okay. Where were we? All right, we're gonna go to our, our intersection here. Okay, warp to there.
Yeah, it's good for you guys. It was just, it's like, bla it was blasting in my ears, so like the sub mix that's in my ears was really loud. Alright, so now we're there. Now we're gonna slow down relative to our target. Oh no! Oh no. Are we out of. <laughs> we're out of propellant. Okay, time to cheat. I'm gonna go infinite propellant, because we are out of propellant. But not anymore! Interesting side side note here. We're using the forward thrusters right now to do our orbital maneuver. So those forward thrusters right here, you can see the two the four thrusters up front there. Alright, so we're trying to slow down. relative to our target something like that then we're gonna point at our target actually we're gonna go anti-target so that we can use the forward thrusters which are a little more powerful and we're gonna burn it towards the target which is behind us So we're gonna go to the target. Try to close the distance a little bit. It's gonna screw up our orbit. That's all right. We're very close. So it's, it's behind us and below us. We're gonna burn to the target, get a little closer. Totally anti target, here we go. This is like the least fuel efficient way possible. We got this. We're going to we're going to get it. We just have to make sure that we don't deorbit. It's going to deorbitate. We don't want that. All right, so we're bringing in our separation here. Fixing our orbit. warp over to here. So we're back in a stable orbit here now, so now we're going to go anti-target. So space station's out here somewhere. I need to burn close to it again. Let's try to get... Try to get a little closer. Here's our now, our, now our closing distance is about five kilometers. Warp there. Did you see an eagle in the, the sound? All right, now we, so we got a little bit closer. Now we're gonna slow down. Try to match speed a little better. We're getting closer. Intercept is about four and a half kilometers we're at now. 
four kilometers. Get our relative speed to almost zero, much as we can. Three, two, one, zero. Look at that, relative speed, almost zero. There, is that, oh no, that's the moon. <laughs> I was like, there it is. No, that's just the moon. All right, now we're gonna, now we're gonna close the gap. Try to meet up with it here. Three kilometers, two kilometers. One, one and a half, 1.2, 1 1.1, 0 1.0, 0 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, all right. So. Now we're getting close. We're going to come within half a kilometer of it. Hopefully we do not crash. Let's fast forward just a touch. Get a little bit closer. Let's pull up our rendezvous menu. No, no target. Oh no. That's our target. Relative speed. Can't see my relative speed anymore. I can't see the relative speed. What happened? Go back to target selection. Now I can't I can't select the target because they're too close together. Uh, space station core, that's my target. Oh, there it is! Oh, oh, oh! Wait, why is it? Wait, wait! What is happening? Show me the other. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right, I couldn't find my. Target distance. There it is. We can see it in the distance there. Right there. We got this. All right, slow it down. Slow it down. There we go. Match speed. So now we're going to burn a little closer. Distance 700 meters away. That's our approach here. Now we're... Oh, there we go. Now we're gonna... Now we have to really fine-tune it. We're coming in. We got this. You can see it in the distance. Okay, how long until we... 39 seconds until we get to our, uh... Oops, no, we want to go retrograde. There it is. We're coming in. We're coming in hot. Look out.
Oh, oh, we passed it. Oh, no. That's all right. Woo. Oh, we almost missed it. We're good. There it is, right there. Okay, how far away are we from it? 33 meters. Woo, we almost, cra almost crashed right into it. Okay. Now. Now we need to dock the thing. Let's see. Which port do we want to dock to? I think we got to dock to the right to the front port here, right? So let's target target the front port and let's switch switch to the target. Control from here. Oh wait. Switch to here. Okay, we need to point point at the target. Okay, that's our target. Switch to there. And a control from here. We're gonna say that's our target. You need to point to the target. So point at each other. There we go. Now bring it together. So we at we gotta somebody's gotta I gotta contact mission control. We're in, uh, we're holding it waypoint one. Can we get a, in the chat, can we get a go, no, go, 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 Let's try again. Can, can we get a go, no, go to continue the approach? Retro. Got nothing. Guidance. Station. I don't know, I don't know who they pull. There we go. Finally got to go. All right, we're go to continue the approach. All right, now. Now we're really closing it in. Oh, oh, we're coming in hot. Oh, oh boy. Nineteen meters away. Back backdrop of the earth. Bring it on. You got this. Slow it down. Bring it in. Bring it in, we got this. Slow it down. Slow it down. Oh, not that much. I don't know. Oh, oh, oh. Dude, stay on target. We go we're kind of spinning a little bit we got it get it in there i don't know why we're spinning so much but it's all right oh docked it soft capture confirmed We got it. Let's turn the lights on. There's no, there's no lights, are there? There's, there's no windows. No, no windows on Cargo Dragon. Why do we have? Who are the astronauts? They must be on our space station, right? <laughs> were they? Were they there the whole time? You can't even see them because uh, I'm in the way. I don't think they were there the whole time. So there, we did it. We docked it. Extend the solar panels. Oh, yeah. Our space station has solar panels. There we go. Should we take a screenshot? What do you think of that? Good screenshot? Where's our... Get backdrop of the Earth here. 
kind of crooked, but... There! All right! Look at that! How about that? Now... Now I feel like we probably ought to bring it back, huh? Welcome to SpaceX One, the first commercial rest stop in space. <laughs> yeah, and we got... Let's... Can we... Should we do an EVA? Where's our... I guess I gotta bring our controls back. So these are, these are our space station members, right? They must be in the station. Yeah, look at They're in our space station here. Looking out. Can't even see Crew Dragon. Or Cargo Dragon. I keep calling it Crew Dragon. Cargo Dragon. All our space station controls. That, that looks super sophisticated. Not a lot of room in this space station. Where are they looking out of? Supposed to be like this part here that they're looking out of? I don't know where they would be. All right, let's see. Transmit data? Sure, why not? All right, let's separate. Let's bring it back. Activate radiator. Probably should have done that sooner. Do an extra vehicle, extra vehicular activity. All right, come on, Jeb. Let's go outside. Let's go for a space walk. Ready? I don't know. I don't know how to control Jeb. I don't know what the. Where do they? Hold on. I always, for, I always forget what the key bindings are for some of this stuff. Um, let me make sure. Translate forward. Yep, that. Translate down. Uh, wait, I, K, J, and L. Okay, got it. All right. Just make sure. Before, I, before Jeb lets go of the space station, it just starts free flight. Let's make sure that he can actually... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Jeb! Jeb, go back! Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, dear me. Oh, goodness. Jeb, go back, please. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Jeb, where are you going? Oh, wow. This was a terrible idea. Okay. It, nope. Those are not the controls to do what I wanted to do. Oh, goodness. Oh, we're in trouble. Okay, how do we get back? We need to go this way. No, 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 no. This way? This way. I don't know how to go up and down. Is it? Oh, there it is. Shift. Okay, got it. Woo! Grab on, Jeb! Oh! We, <laughs> we almost lost Jeb permanently. Oh. Okay, get back in there. That was a terrible idea. That was awful. We, we almost lost Jeb permanently in space. Alright, while we're ahead, let's bring... Let's bring the dragon back. We're gonna be... Go for undocking. Lights on? There are lights on that? Alright. Undock. All right, let's let's back it up. There we go. Just like that. Get her away. We're directly over the, pretty much directly over the space center there. 
Now the question is, how close can I land to the space center? Hope the missing part wasn't a parachute. I hope so too. All right. So we're gonna warp, warp over to here. There goes our space station. See you later. Not too far away, but... And now, it's time... Deorberate. To deorberate. It's gonna deorberate. Right. Time to bring her home. Let's see how close we can land to the space center. Oh, shoot. Too far. Oh, wait, no, we're good. We're good. We're okay. Splash down right off the coast there. Just like that. Look at that. Go right off the coast. Right off the coast. Tell the... Tell the boats to stay away. Because <laughs> we're coming in. It's going to deorberate. Here we go. All right, so we did our deorbit burn. We can now... Oh, shoot, we're supposed to jettison the trunk before that, aren't we? It's all right, we'll do... Uh... Let's see, no, we don't want to roll. We want to... Let's just do stability assist. And we'll just... We're just going to fling it off in the distance. Actually, don't even do stability assist. I can't. Why can't I? Oh, turn. I don't want stability assist. Get rid of that. Here we go. Watch this. We're just going to fling it off. Well. There. Okay. Goodbye, trunk. Let's fling that off so it gets away from us so it doesn't crash into us. Close the shroud. Now we'll just enjoy the ride. What's... What is this? Retract gear. It's got a landing gear. What is that? That's interesting. All right. We are positioned for re-entry. Uh-oh. Except it says our re-entry is going to be way over here. Uh-oh, that's not good. We want our re-entry over here. There. Fixed. Try to land, like, just off the coast. I can't... <laughs> it's too sensitive that I can't even control how far it goes. Right there off the coast. Okay. We're ready. Let's uh let's quick save it just in case I crash and burn horribly. Should we get our Let's get our uh dramatic music again.
All right, I had to adjust our orbit a little bit because uh, apparently I was going to do it once around and then deorbit, but, but now we're going straight in. It's going to deorbit. All right, so we're coming straight in. I think we're good. We're going to land probably off the coast. Some people said, why not? If I have the legs, why not land at the space center? I don't know if I have that. I don't know if I'm that if I can be that accurate. I'll try if we can land on on the ground. I'll, I'll try it. Why not? Let's, uh, all right, entry interface coming up here. Very shortly. Let's warp to entry interface here. Where's our space station? Is it still above us? There's the moon. Don't know where it is. I think it's long, long gone now. Too far away to see. Here's entry interface coming up. It's going to deorbit. Hitting some atmosphere now. 68 kilometers. How's our how's our landing target? Are we still on target? Oh, or a little, a little long. We'll just use t just a touch bit of thruster. Extend that out a bit. Oh, now we're getting some drag. Now we're getting, uh, now we're getting some drag. Push it out. Let's see. Let's see if we can do it. I gotta use some thrusters to push that out even further. There you go, 63 kilometers. We're we're in the atmosphere now. Could probably unset our target now. We don't need that anymore. Doing some minor adjustments to our landing site. So landing site. I don't know if we're going to be able to control it that much. We're going to try. Bring it in. Sixty kilometers now. We haven't hit the. We haven't hit the atmospheric heating yet. But we're working on it. 58, 57. gonna be long oh no slow us down slow us down we're gonna be long now we're gonna miss it we're gonna miss it long I guess we're landing in the water I 
Here we go. Getting some heating now. Well, we're a touch long. That's all right. We'll fly right over the space center. Coming in screaming. We're coming in hot. Oh, wow. We're going to scream over the space center. We are definitely going to... There's the space center right there. Definitely going to miss that one. Yep. Well... There's that. Oh, we're also we're also in fast forward mode. <laughs> That's alright though, we're right off the coast. Not too far off. There we go. Look at we can even see we'll see the space center. From the distance. We got this. Drogues are out. Parachutes out. Do we have a drone ship? No drone ship, but... I think those are just our main pair. I don't think they're technically drogue chutes. I think those are our, our main parachutes. They're just reefed. We got this. Parachutes, th parachutes and everything. Almost could have gone for the island, yeah? Still 100, 105 meters per second. We're two kilometers off the surface. Hopefully she slows down. <laughs> Slow down, please. Slow down. We're still 95 meters per second. Oh, jeez, that was loud. That scared me. There we go. Now oh, they disreefed. They're kind of on top of each other. I don't know what's up with that, but... Now we'll come in at a nice, gentle 5 meters per second. That'll be nice. We're 700, 750 meters above the surface. Good to go. Landed it. Well, not yet. I guess I probably shouldn't count my chickens before the eggs hatch, right? Who knows what could go wrong? Now we're just now we're just waiting. All right. Accidentally cut the shoots. <laughs> Oops. I can use the thrusters. Like we could we could go thrusters to hurry it down. No, that doesn't work, does it? Doesn't really work so much anymore. We've got parachutes. Now it's, gonna, now it's just taking forever to come down. 375 meters. We're almost there. We're coming down. Don't need that anymore. Three hundred meters to the surface. Till splash down. Splash down expected in. Mm, doesn't give me a time. I mean, it, it says six seconds, but that's not possible. <laughs> Cut just one parachute and then it'll go faster. <laughs> this is, we're almost there. We got this, 125 meters. Oh, I could time warp. Yeah, 
ads. That's, it's kind of loud, and it's kind of... Why is it sitting so strangely in the water? Like, it's not even touching the water. Okay, well, splashdown. We did it! It's a weird... It's kind of weird looking that it's... The way it's sitting in the water, but... But there! Should do, do a Rocket Lab helicopter catch next time? <laughs> I don't know... I don't know how to do that. That's beyond my, uh... That's beyond my Kerbal expertise. Okay, well, I think... I think that's that's where we're gonna wrap things up here. This was a uh, this was a fun morning, fun early afternoon, hang out a bit. We got a uh, cargo dragon launched. It's separated and on its way to the space station tomorrow, and uh, tomorrow will also be uh, hopefully live streaming again for Starship's SN8 which will be pretty awesome, I think. So hopefully uh, hopefully that goes tomorrow. We don't know. We don't know if it'll go tomorrow or not. We'll have to see. So. All right. Well, at what time? I, we don't know what time. That's, that's going to be the problem. So you're going to have to either join. You have to turn on the YouTube notifications and or join our Discord and you'll get a notification when uh, it's going to launch, because I don't know what time it's going to launch. It's sometime between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. And that's not a it's a very wide range. What's that? That's like uh, 1400 to 2300 UTC. Is that right? It's a big window. Big window. We have no idea. It could be right at the beginning. I doubt it. Probably be more like in the middle, I would expect. I'm thinking maybe around between 12 and 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it's like 1600 to 1900 UTC. Is that right? Did I do that? Or no. 20, uh, 20, 100, 20, 100? Is that how you say it? UTC? Some, it's going to be some. It's somewhere in that range. That's my guess. But don't quote me on that. Big window. Big launch window. So, but we'll be back again, and we will uh, hopefully get to see the the starship fly for the, the the first time with like the full the fins and the what uh, people are calling the elanerons, and uh, it'll be uh, it'll be a fun time. All right, well, I think that's gonna be it for me. Consider joining the Discord, and I'll we'll chat more over there. And I'm going to wrap up here, and I'm going to end it. And we'll hopefully see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for joining us today. This was fun. And I will see you tomorrow for SN8, hopefully. If not, then I'll talk to you in Discord. All right. Thanks, everybody. My name is Tori, and this is Overlook Horizon. And I will see you tomorrow. Have a good day, everybody. See you later. Goodbye.